Part 1, The Fundamentals of Cybersecurity. Cybersecurity fundamentals refer to the core principles and practices that are essential for protecting computer systems, networks, and data from unauthorized access, cyber threats, and data breaches. These fundamentals form the basis of a strong cybersecurity posture and are crucial for individuals and organizations alike. Here are some key cybersecurity fundamentals. Confidentiality. Confidentiality ensures that sensitive information remains private and accessible only to authorized individuals. It involves implementing measures such as encryption, access controls, and secure communication channels to prevent unauthorized disclosure. Integrity. Integrity ensures the accuracy, consistency, and trustworthiness of data and systems. It involves implementing mechanisms to prevent unauthorized modification, tampering, or corruption of data and ensuring that data remains intact and unaltered. Availability. Availability ensures that systems, networks, and data are accessible and operational when needed. It involves implementing measures to prevent service disruptions, such as implementing backup and disaster recovery solutions, redundancy, and proactive monitoring to detect and address potential issues. Authentication. Authentication verifies the identity of users, systems, or devices attempting to access a network or system. It involves the use of strong passwords, multi-factor authentication, MFA, biometrics, and other techniques to ensure that only authorized individuals or systems gain access. Authorization. Authorization determines what actions or resources an authenticated user or system can access. It involves assigning appropriate permissions and privileges based on user roles and responsibilities to prevent unauthorized access or misuse of resources. Risk management. Risk management involves identifying, assessing, and mitigating potential cybersecurity risks. Risk management includes conducting regular risk assessments, implementing security controls and safeguards, and developing incident response plans to minimize the impact of security incidents. Security awareness. Security awareness is about educating and training individuals to recognize and respond to potential cyber threats. It includes promoting good security practices, such as strong password hygiene, avoiding phishing emails and suspicious links, and being vigilant against social engineering tactics. Vulnerability management. Vulnerability management involves identifying and remediating security vulnerabilities in systems and software. It includes regularly patching and updating software, conducting vulnerability assessments and penetration testing, and promptly addressing identified weaknesses. Security monitoring. Security monitoring involves continuously monitoring systems, networks, and data for potential security breaches or anomalies. Security monitoring includes implementing intrusion detection and prevention systems, log monitoring, and security information and event management, CM, solutions to detect and respond to security incidents promptly. Incident response. Incident response is a planned approach to addressing and managing security incidents. It involves establishing an incident response team, developing incident response plans and playbooks, and conducting regular drills and exercises to ensure an effective response in the event of a security breach. These fundamentals provide a solid foundation for implementing a comprehensive cybersecurity strategy. However, it is important to note that cybersecurity is a rapidly evolving field, and staying updated with the latest threats, technologies, and best practices is crucial for maintaining a strong security posture. Here are some basics of cybersecurity that you should know. 1. Passwords. Using secure passwords is important to protect your personal and sensitive information from unauthorized access. Here are some tips for creating and using secure passwords. 1.1. Use a strong password. A strong password should be at least 12 characters long and include a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. 1.2. Avoid using personal information. Don't use your name, birth date, or other personal information in your password, as it can be easy for someone to guess. 1.3. Use different passwords for different accounts, don't use the same password for multiple accounts. If one password is compromised, it can put all of your accounts at risk. 1.4. Don't share your password, never share your password with anyone, including friends and family. 1.5. Use two-factor authentication, many websites and services offer two-factor authentication, 
2FA, which requires you to enter a code generated by an authenticator app such as Google Authenticator or a code sent to your smartphone or email in addition to your password giving you an extra layer of security. 1.6. Use a password manager. A password manager such as NordPass can help you create and remember strong passwords for all of your online accounts saving them in a very secure vault. 1.7. Use of random words in a password. This can make it more secure against hacking attempts. Here are some tips on using random words effectively. Use a long passphrase rather than a short password. For example, Correct horse battery staple is more secure than TR0UB4 door and 3. Choose words randomly rather than a known phrase. Avoid common phrases, quotes, or song lyrics. Use a mix of random words, numbers, and special characters. For example, color 179 paperclip bicycle potato. Use a password generator tool to randomly combine words if needed. Diceware is a popular method that uses dice rolls to pick words from a list. Use a combination of lowercase, uppercase, numbers and symbols. This increases the complexity of brute force attacks. Avoid personal information, names, birthdays, or dictionary words. Make the words as random as possible. Use a different random passphrase for each account. Don't reuse the same passphrase across multiple sites. Consider using a password manager to store long, complex passphrases securely. This helps you avoid reusing or forgetting them. Update passwords periodically, such as every 90 days. Changing a few words in your existing passphrase can help. The key is using long, random strings of words and characters that only you know. This makes it extremely difficult for hackers to guess via brute force attacks. 2. Antivirus software. Antivirus software such as Avast, McAfee, or Norton, is a type of computer program designed to detect, prevent, and remove malicious software, also known as malware, from a computer system. Malware can include viruses, Trojan horses, worms, spyware, and adware, which can compromise the security of a computer system, steal data, or damage the system's files. Antivirus software works by scanning the files and programs on a computer system, looking for known patterns or signatures of malware. When it finds a match, it either quarantines or deletes the infected file or program. Antivirus software also uses heuristics and behavior-based detection to identify new and unknown threats that do not match any known malware signatures. In addition to real-time scanning, many antivirus software programs provide additional features such as firewalls, email filtering, and web protection. These features help to protect the computer system from several types of attacks and can prevent users from accidentally downloading or installing malicious software. It is important to keep antivirus software up to date with the latest virus definitions and software patches to ensure the best possible protection against new and emerging threats. 3. Firewalls. A firewall is a network security device that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. Firewalls are used to protect a network from unauthorized access and to prevent malware and other security threats from spreading through the network. There are several types of firewalls, including 3.1 packet filtering firewalls, these firewalls examine each packet of data that travels through the network and compare it to a set of predefined rules. If a packet matches the rules, it is allowed through the firewall. If not, it is blocked. 3.2 Stateful firewalls These firewalls not only examine individual packets but also keep track of the state of network connections. This enables them to allow incoming traffic that is part of an established connection while blocking traffic that is not. 3.3 Application Level Gateways These firewalls inspect data at the application layer of the network protocol stack. They can block or allow specific types of traffic based on the application being used. Firewalls are a vital component of network security and are commonly used in both home and enterprise networks. By controlling access to a network and monitoring network traffic, firewalls can help prevent unauthorized access and protect sensitive data from being compromised. However, firewalls are just one part of a comprehensive security strategy and should be used in conjunction with other security measures such as antivirus software, intrusion detection systems, and regular security audits. For software updates, 
essential for ensuring the security, functionality, and performance of any software application. Here are some of the reasons why software updates are important. For point one security, software updates often include security patches that address vulnerabilities or bugs that could be exploited by cybercriminals. By keeping your software up to date, you reduce the risk of security breaches, data loss, and other cyber threats. For point two, improved functionality, software updates often include new features, improvements, and bug fixes that can enhance the overall functionality of the software. This means you can enjoy a better user experience and increased productivity. For point three performance, updates can also improve the performance of the software by optimizing its code, improving its efficiency, and reducing memory usage. This can result in faster load times, better responsiveness, and smoother performance. For point four, compatibility, as technology evolves, software applications may become incompatible with newer hardware or operating systems. Software updates can ensure compatibility with the latest hardware and operating systems, which helps to extend the life of your software investment. For point five support, software vendors typically provide support only for the latest versions of their software. By staying up to date with software updates, you ensure that you are eligible for support when you need it. Overall, software updates are crucial for maintaining the security, functionality, and performance of any software application. It is important to keep your software up to date to avoid potential issues and ensure that you are getting the most out of your software investment. 5. Backups, essential for ensuring the safety and security of important data and information. They provide a way to recover data in case of system failure, data corruption, cyber attacks, or other unforeseen circumstances. Here are some reasons why backups are important. 5.1. Protecting against data loss. Backups ensure that data is safe and can be restored in case of any data loss due to hardware or software failure, accidental deletion, or human error. 5.2. Mitigating the impact of cyber attacks. Cyber attacks like ransomware and malware can cause considerable damage to computer systems and data. Backups provide a way to recover from these attacks and minimize their impact. 5.3. Compliance with regulatory requirements. Many industries have strict regulatory requirements for data backup and retention. Backups can help organizations comply with these requirements and avoid penalties for non-compliance. 5.4. Facilitating disaster recovery. Backups are an essential part of disaster recovery planning. They provide a way to recover critical data and applications in case of a natural disaster or other catastrophic event. 5.5. Peace of mind, knowing that data is safely backed up and can be recovered in case of any issues can provide peace of mind to individuals and organizations. In summary, backups are crucial for data protection, business continuity, and compliance with regulations. They should be a part of any organization's data management strategy. 6. Phishing. Phishing is a type of cyber attack in which an attacker sends a fraudulent email, text message, or website that appears to be from a legitimate source to obtain sensitive information, such as usernames, passwords, credit card numbers, or other personal information. The goal of a phishing attack is to trick the victim into providing their information, which can then be used to commit identity theft, financial fraud, or other malicious activities. Phishing attacks can be very convincing, often using social engineering techniques to create a sense of urgency or fear in the victim. For example, a phishing email might claim that the victim's account has been compromised and prompt them to click on a link to reset their password, which would then take them to a fake website that looks like a legitimate one. Alternatively, a phishing email might ask the victim to provide personal information for a legitimate reason, such as updating their account information or confirming a payment. To protect yourself from phishing attacks, it is important to be cautious when opening emails or clicking on links from unknown or suspicious sources. Always verify the legitimacy of a website before entering any sensitive information and never provide personal information in response to an unsolicited email or phone call. Additionally, using two-factor authentication and regularly updating your passwords can help to prevent unauthorized access to your accounts. 7. Social engineering is a technique used to manipulate or influence people into taking actions that may not be in their best interest, often for malicious purposes. It involves exploiting people's trust, emotions, and natural tendencies to make them divulge sensitive information, 
perform certain actions, or grant access to restricted areas. Social engineering can take many forms, including phishing attacks, pretexting, baiting, and tailgating. In a phishing attack, the attacker sends a fraudulent email or message that is from a trusted source, such as a bank or social media platform, and asks the recipient to provide sensitive information like passwords or credit card numbers. Pretexting involves creating a false identity or scenario to gain the trust of the target and extract sensitive information or access. Baiting involves leaving a tempting item, like a USB drive, in a public place, hoping that someone will pick it up and use it on their computer, thereby granting the attacker access to that computer. Tailgating involves following someone into a restricted area without proper authorization. Social engineering attacks can be highly effective because they exploit people's natural tendencies, such as trust and helpfulness. It is important to be vigilant and cautious when interacting with others, especially when it comes to providing sensitive information or granting access to restricted areas. Awareness and education about social engineering can also help individuals and organizations protect themselves from these types of attacks. 8. Remote working or remote access. If you work remotely, use a secure virtual private network, VPN, to protect your online activity and data from unauthorized access by encrypting all data being transferred from your computer to the internet, your work's internal network and back. Remote access is defined as the ability to connect and control a computer or network from a different location over the internet or a private network. Remote access is defined as the ability to connect and control a computer or network from a different location over the internet or a private network. It allows users to access files, applications, and other resources on a remote computer or network as if they were physically present in the same location. Remote access can be achieved using various tools and technologies, including Remote Desktop Protocol, RDP, Virtual Private Network, VPN, and cloud-based services. It is commonly used by businesses to provide remote employees with access to company resources, such as files, databases, and applications, as well as to support remote collaboration and communication. However, remote access also poses security risks, as it can potentially allow unauthorized access to sensitive data and systems. To minimize these risks, it is important to use secure remote access methods, implement proper access controls, and regularly monitor and audit remote access activities. 9. Cybersecurity Awareness Finally, stay informed about the latest cybersecurity threats and best practices through online resources, training, and workshops. Stay vigilant and report any suspicious activity to your IT department or cybersecurity experts. Cybersecurity awareness is defined as the knowledge, understanding, and practices that individuals and organizations use to protect themselves from online threats and attacks. It involves being aware of the several types of cyber threats, such as malware, phishing, ransomware, and social engineering, and taking proactive steps to prevent them. Cybersecurity awareness involves staying informed about the latest security risks and vulnerabilities, understanding how to protect personal and sensitive information, and knowing how to respond to security incidents when they occur. It also involves using strong passwords, keeping software up to date, and being vigilant about suspicious emails, links, and messages. Overall, cybersecurity awareness is an essential aspect of staying safe online, and individuals and organizations must prioritize cybersecurity education and training to prevent cyber attacks and protect sensitive data. It is the practice of protecting sensitive data and critical systems from digital attacks known as cybersecurity. It is a clear strategy used to combat threats that affect an organization's business critical networked applications and systems. Case studies, according to IBM, the cost of a data breach in 2022 was around 3 million US dollars in the US and over 5 US dollars million in the global market. These expenses include the cost of responding to the incident, the cost of downtime, and the long-term damage to a company's reputation. In most cases, criminals obtain the personal information of customers, such as their names, addresses, email addresses, credit card numbers, and social security numbers. They then sell these records on the dark web, such as underground digital platforms such as Tor. Compromised PII, personally identifiable information, can lead to various issues, such as the loss of customer trust and the imposition of legal actions. The phrase cybersecurity refers to a range of situations, including commercial and mobile computers, 
and can be broken down into a few basic categories. Network security, the act of protecting a computer network from intruders, including malicious software that seizes opportunities or targeted attacks, is known as network security. Application security aims to keep devices and software safe from harm. The data that an application is meant to safeguard may be accessible if it is compromised. Effective security starts at the design phase, long before a program or gadget is put into use. Data integrity and privacy are safeguarded during storage and transmission through the use of information security. Operational security covers the procedures and choices used to manage and safeguard data assets. The protocols that determine how and where users access networks, the permissions they have, and that determine how and where data may be stored or shared all fall under this umbrella. Disaster recovery and business continuity define how an organization responds to a cybersecurity incident or any other event that causes the loss of operations or data. Disaster recovery policies dictate how the organization restores its operations and information to return to the same operating capacity as before the event. Business continuity is the plan the organization falls back on while trying to operate without certain resources. End-user education addresses the most unpredictable cybersecurity factor, people. Anyone can accidentally introduce a virus to an otherwise secure system by failing to follow good security practices. Teaching users to delete suspicious email attachments, not plug in unidentified USB drives, and various other important lessons is vital for the security of any organization.